Thank you very much for your presentation to the J to J journalist to journalist long health fellows. Um, I'd like you, Brenda, to explain a bit about Unit Aid, how it started, how it's funded, and what you do. Sure. Thank you, Bob. So Unit Aid is a WHO partnership based in Geneva, Switzerland. We are a small donor organization based uh, at WHO headquarters. We have an independent board. We were established in 2006 by five founding countries, France, Brazil, Norway, Chile, and the United Kingdom. We were uh, founded based upon the idea that one could basically apply an airline tax levy to passengers routing through France, and that tax money could be basically used to support pediatric HIV, which in 2006, at the time Unitaid was established, was a very neglected disease area. So people were so excited about this innovative way to collect funds for global health that many countries decided to join France and create similar tax levies or contribute through budget funding. They established Unitaid uh, at WHO headquarters in Geneva. Our organization only works in HIV, TB, and malaria. We have an operating budget of around $350 million uh, that comes from several countries uh, plus the Gates Foundation. And we work only on products used to diagnose, prevent, and treat HIV, tuberculosis, and malaria. What we're trying to do is to make sure that the best products are available in the highest quality at the most acceptable form and in a way that's affordable for the people who need to use them. All right, wonderful. Tell me a bit about the products, uh, the projects you've worked on since just 2006. Sure. So most recently we worked with USAID and the Gates Foundation to bring down the price of Gene Expert, a new revolutionary diagnostic tuberculosis product, from $18 a test to less than $10 a test. And this dramatic price reduction allowed many different countries and donors to, ac to access that diagnostic at this reduced price. That type of a mechanism best illustrates what Unitaid does. We try to work with market approaches, making interventions that everybody benefits from, not just Unitaid. What's a brief description of a market approach? Market approach is one in which you've looked at where people have difficulty accessing products. For example, pediatrics. And you say, very few kids have access to pediatric TB treatment. Why is that? And if you look at the market around pediatric TB, nobody actually makes pediatric TB medicines in a way that is acceptable to kids. Right now, if you want to treat pediatric tuberculosis, you have to take a minimum of three different adult-sized tablets and break them into two or three or four or five pieces. And that is hardly scientific. You're hoping that the proportions you are breaking the pills into work. Is that correct? Correct. Nobody really knows if what we're giving kids actually works. And for sure, it's very difficult for the caregiver and difficult for the kid. So what we have done then is said, the market will never respond and create that because the market is too small, there's no incentives. What we really need to do is work with somebody to actually develop this formulation. So we contracted the Global TB Alliance to take this on and to work with industry to make a product that's acceptable for kids to hope that we can actually increase the quality and number of kids getting pediatric treatment. For those who don't know, um, uh, tuberculosis drugs taken by adults are large, difficult to swallow, also very unpleasant to taste and with uh, um, a difficult impact, an unpleasant impact on your body. Now if you're breaking those pills up and giving them to a child, 
you're having the same problem with a child who has much less ability to understand um, uh, what's happening to his or her body. Am I correct on that? It's correct. It's also when you take a tablet that doesn't taste good and oh. you break it in half, it tastes worse. Because they often have a filming around the outside that protects you from that nasty taste on the inside. So where are you on the development of pediatric drugs for tuberculosis? So we think that we should have a new formulation that should be ready for WHO prequalification in about 18 months in the hopes that it would be available for purchase in about two years. Uh, and at the same time that we're supporting the development of that formulation, we are also working at country level to make sure that people are ready to use that so that it gets implemented into country programs immediately after it's available. That's wonderful. Um, let me ask you if there are just one or two other projects that UnitAid is working on now that we might see shortly. Yes, I think at this conference in particular, you'll see a lot of excitement around the project that we're doing with Partners in Health around improving treatment for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis in adults. So you probably know that there's been a, a few new um, medicines that have been approved by the FDA and the EMA for MDR-TB. The problem is they were approved after phase two trials. They didn't actually get into the full phase three trials. Therefore, it's very difficult for other countries to accept these drugs because they don't have the clinical data that they need. In addition, there are lots of side effects associated with these drugs. And we haven't yet figured out how you can introduce these new regimens in a way that's safe. So they have cardiac toxicities, um, they have other problems that can result in loss of hearing. Uh, and what we need to make sure is that they are implemented in a way that patients are monitored appropriately and they're used appropriately so that people don't become resistant to them. So we've funded a substantial project with PIH and MSF to figure out now that these products have been approved by the regulators, how do we safely and efficiently actually implement them in countries that actually need to use these products? All right. Congratulations to you and to UnitAid uh, on your work.